Breast cancer is the most common cancer among women worldwide. Statistics suggest that one out of eight women will develop breast cancer over the course of her lifetime. This month, there have been several activities, campaigns and events going around in Doha to spread awareness on this. But I still believe definitely we need to do more towards this cause. Hence, luckily today on the set, I have with me Dr. Kulsum Junejo, a consultant breast surgeon in Hamad Medical Corporation since 2011. So viewers, let's have a complete knowledge of breast cancer and hear it straight from the person herself, Dr. Kulsum Junejo. Assalamu alaikum Dr. Kulsum and welcome in Spotlight with Zunira. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah and thank you very much for inviting me here for this very important cause yes. to spread breast awareness amongst our ladies. Our pleasure. So Dr. Kulsum, cancer. First, let's speak about this disease. What is cancer actually? Right. So if you say cancer, cancer, we say that it is an uncontrolled division of abnormal cells in the body okay mm -hmm. this is kind of a definition of cancer if you say it and uh, it can be anywhere breast liver lungs skin colon anywhere and uh, but God has made us really foolproof in our body for growth for uh, replacing the damaged cells the cell division happens the cells replicate to replace the damaged cells or for the growth of our body. Mm -hmm. So there are certain checkpoints at the replication of these cells, at the division, or we call it a cell cycle. So for some reason, if these checkpoints, they get lazy or they are altered or disturbed, then the cells go into abnormal growth and uncontrolled growth, and that causes cancer. And what are the reasons that they go under that right. phase? Now, there are different reasons for different cancers. As we know that smoking is implicated in lung cancer. Mm -hmm. There are certain risk factors for breast cancer. There are certain factors for colon cancers. So every, every cancer has its own risk factors, but there are certain very general risk factors, which I'll talk about as we go on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And um, just a general knowledge, general information I would share with you. Uh, when we talk of cancer, the word cancer, where did it come from? It came from uh, Hippocrates, the uh, father of medicine, the Greek physician. Mm -hmm. And he named it this disease as cancer because when he cut open the tissues of those uh, people who died of cancer, he saw that this resembles a crab. And to crab in uh, Greek, they called carcinos. Okay. And from carcinose, it came as cancer or carcinoma. Mm -hmm. So that is how the word originated. originated. But okay. having said that, he was not the first person to discover it. Okay. We find uh, breast cancer uh, description in uh, very old Egyptian documents, mm -hmm. dating back to more than 1500 years before Christ. Okay. So it's, it's quite an old disease, but now we have the diagnostic modalities, we diagnose it uh, um, early and we know about it more. So that's how it is. So earlier people were dying out of it and there was no cure Exactly. To it. Previously mm -hmm. they, they called it incurable disease. Mm -hmm. And they used to cauterize or burn the tissues to just limit the disease. And also, you know, there is something with the snake flame as well, right? Yeah, they, uh, that is that, that is what used they, yeah. to be done at earlier uh, ages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. They used to burn it and they called it fire drill and all. Mm -hmm. yeah. So let's talk about breast cancer. Right. Uh, what are the symptoms basically and how do you know that you do have it in you? Right, okay. Now, uh, breast cancer, as we know, breast is consist of uh, milk producing glands and the tubes which carry the milk out to the nipple. So it can, the commonest cancer of the breast arises from these milk tubes, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, the other common type arises from the glands, of the, the milk producing glands. So these are the two major types of breast cancer. And what, uh, how, what are the symptoms? How can the ladies know about it? The most common symptom is ladies discovering a painless lump in their breast. A painless? Painless okay. lump in their breast. 
pain when they say that they have pain in the breast, I say that's music to my ears. Okay. <laughs> because uh, pain is, uh, pr they, they are painless in more than 97% of the cases. Mm -hmm. So, but having said that, if somebody is coming with pain, that doesn't mean that you ignore it. No, you have to assess it to rule out the other causes. Mm -hmm. And then there are various other symptoms as nipple changes, some bloody discharge from from nipples or any other, even colorless discharge from one side, which is just coming by itself, not on expression, or any change in the size of the breast. Mm -hmm. I remember one of a very young lady, she come, came to my clinic, she was just, I think, um, in her tw late 20s. And uh, she said she, she feels that her breast, one of the breast is kind of increasing in size. And she has been to various doctors and, and uh, didn't have any answer mm -hmm. and that had been going on for about about a couple of months more than six months and when she came to the clinic she it was a frozen breast she had that cancer oh, sitting okay. there for for a while unfortunately and she was not diagnosed but how come at a young age she is and she's not even a mother I'm sure yeah should age is well it does happen with increasing age but that doesn't mean that the young age is they cannot have. Mm -hmm. No, young age can also have cancer, breast cancer. This is something I'm, I'm uh, yeah. getting to know first yeah. time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so our youngsters, our girls. That's why when we do breast cancer awareness campaigns, I specifically tend to cater the high school girls because that is, if you, as in Islam, we say, if you educate one woman, you you are educating the whole family. So there is, we can start from that educating our young generation and who, they are the ones who, who spread the message, who become aware so they, they can take care of their family. Exactly. So coming back to your question that yes, what symptoms? Yes, it is, as I said, breast lump, changes in the nipple, changes mm -hmm. in the size of, uh, size of the breast. And of course, any, any lumps found in the armpit, mm -hmm. that is again important because breast cancer spreads from the breast to the glands in the armpit. They are called lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. So any lymph node becoming enlarged and nothing in the breast can also be suspicious. Okay, but getting a lymph node is something very common and you can find it with every other lady. But it's not necessary, it's cancerous. No, not necessary, yeah. as even the lump, when the lead, uh, it's 80% of the lumps are benign. Yeah. Not necessary that every lump is a cancer, no. Mm -hmm. Out of 100, 80% are benign. Yeah. So it is just that you have to go to the right person to have it checked and rule out. Mm -hmm. So that is what we say. Mm -hmm. So what do you suggest, doctor? What is the best age to go for your first annual checkup or mammogram? Right, when, when, when we uh, always advise our, uh, our girls our, that have breast self-examination, be breast aware. You are at the age of 20 and above, as you are pubertal, you should mm -hmm. know what your breast feels like. So if you examine your breast, I was just uh, advising someone that if you, they said, what should we feel? How, would, how do we know what to feel in mm, our breast? Exactly. Right? This is a very common question you get. So just if you feel your breast and you, once you feel it, you feel, okay, this is it in the next phase of your menstrual cycle if you feel it again if you feel anything different then you go to a specialist yeah. 20 and above you should start your bare breast self-examination mm -hmm. at least in initially we say once in three months then 30 above once in a month is good enough and 40 above we say mammographic screening is advised mm -hmm. so in in uh, qatar we have started the national breast screening program here we screen the ladies 45 and above, okay? Mm -hmm. And uh, for screening, I would suggest that uh, those ladies uh, who are 45 and above, they should approach their uh, health centers because it is very much with the health centers mm -hmm. and there they can have the screening done and if there is anything, they will be automatically referred to our clinics. Okay. Yeah. Okay, now tell me who are the people uh, most at the risk of having it? 80, more than 80% of the cases, we don't know what causes it, okay? Mm. So we can't pinpoint a cause. But yes, certain risk factors we say that these are the things which can be a factor causing it mm. or a fact synergistic effect on causation of the breast cancer. So 
uh, when we say that there are certain uh, hormonal risk factors, there are certain uh, factors which could be modified and 15 to 20 percent we say yes that is a family related family related mm -hmm. breast cancers and just in 5 to 5 percent of cases or less than 10 percent I would say we have the genetic mutations right so these are the, the common genetic mutations of BRCA1 and BRCA2 as you must have uh, known about um, Angelina Jolie the celebrity mm -hmm. who was found to have this BRCA mutations and she uh, had both breasts removed. Mm -hmm. So uh, th these these are the cases which who have these genetic mutation who are definitely the high risk groups, okay. right? And the other risk factors, as I said, the the hormonal risk factors, and as having the uh, start of the periods at an early age and mm -hmm. stoppage menopause at a late age above 55 and uh, start periods be uh, be before 12 years and uh, uh, these um, having first child at a later age 30 or above so we always as previously of course when women were married they used to have finished their family early but then a trend came that women used to think okay let me finish my career things and then I'll mm. get on with my family but that is that is not right uh, if you have a child at at a later age 30 or above the you that is a risk factor for, for breast cancer mm -hmm. so we we okay, uh, so these, this, advise this is, our children to uh -huh. when that it's better if you are married you start your family early, At early yeah, age. Okay. and then breastfeeding. Yes, uh, breastfeeding. But if you uh, breastfeed your child for a year or more, yes, you decrease the risk of breast cancer. But all these things, they are risk factors. That doesn't mean that if you're doing all these, you you uh, will not get breast cancer. Yeah, because yeah. women they are breastfeeding for two years and of more, course, and still they are affected. They are still affected. And yes. uh, what about the ladies who are like after the feeding is done with the kid and they take medicines to dry their milk? So uh, I've heard that these are also one of the reasons, or no, nothing Not really. related to it. Nothing is. There's no scientific evidence mm -hmm. that proves that that can cause these milk stopping medication can mm -hmm. cause that. No. Nothing like that. That is okay. just a myth. And um, yes, uh, our the the recognized risk factors is of course we are in a Muslim country. Alcohol consumption that is again a risk factor. Smoking is a risk factor for breast cancer as well. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, um, even you mean shisha as well, not only yes, cigarette smoking. Yes, of course, smoking. of okay. course. Even the passive smoking, uh -huh. somebody smoking in and the vicinity and you are there. Obesity, yeah, okay. yeah. So and lifestyle. You, I mean, our children. We are growing our children who are sitting in front of the television. When, whenever they come back from school, they're in front of TV, they're in front of the computers, laptops, iPads, exactly, whatever. Exactly. And we don't promote physical activity for them. I mean, the mothers are busy chatting on phone, they are, they are busy with their kitty parties. They don't take care of that. This is, this is where we are really, mm -hmm. uh, really, we have to be proactive. Exactly. We, can, we can beat this beast only with our efforts. Exactly. If we if we just let it go, oh, that's all right. It's going on fine. Our life is going smooth. That is not the answer. Mm -hmm. We have to work to uh, defeat this beast. Yes, we have to put an effort to. We have to put an it. effort exactly. because well if said. we if we educate our 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 children to to uh, involve more in physical activities, be be more um, uh, play more outdoors or indoors, but be not sitting in front of the TV mm -hmm. or a couch potato taking burgers and uh, mm -hmm. chips all the time, that is not right, and. Of course, diet is a very important factor. I was about to ask you. This. Yeah, diet is a very important factor. I'll tell you a, a, a recent study in one of uh, a reputable journal. They they were um, doing a study to see that how does a Mediterranean diet affects the ca um, cardiac diseases incidence, mm -hmm. and it was just an incidental finding which they found that the. Uh, breast cancer incidence was low in those cases who were who uh, who were in the positive arm group that is they took Mediterranean diet for that time period okay so what is Mediterranean diet it is more of the plants and Vegetable veggies and yeah. taking more uh, virgin uh, uh, olive oils 
and uh, fish and less of a red meat and things. Mm. So it is very important to take care of your diet. It is not just breast cancer, it's colon cancer, it's lots of other cancers are implicated with that. Mm -hmm. So diet, 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 that is, that is very important key thing. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, I believe lifestyle basically. Absolutely, lifestyle, lifestyle changes. Your lifestyle uh, makes a yeah. lot of difference. A uh, lot of difference. And uh, with that you can cure so many things in Absolutely life. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dr. Kulsum, sometimes uh, there are conflicting views of doctors for the same patient and this, this is something which has happened here with a woman. So uh, this lady was telling me that before she was di diagnosed that there is nothing and then later on after two years of her life, she, she was actually diagnosed with it. Okay. Just because of the confusions of the doctors. So in this case, it, particularly what one person should do? Right, okay. Uh, I would answer it uh, like this, that uh, you have to choose the right person, right? If you're having a problem for breast, you should go to a breast surgeon. You should not be going to any, any other specialist. Mm -hmm. Because we in Hamad, we, we are the specialized breast team. Nowhere in Qatar you have any specialized breast surgeons. We have a breast team who are specialized breast surgeons, trained in breast uh, surgeries and breast cancers in Hamad. So uh, ladies you, uh, here in Qatar, they, if you have the, any problem, they keep on going to even private hospitals, whatever. We say that we provide you the best service in Hamad. And uh, yeah. Her Highness, she uh, started um, a program that the suspected cancers should be seen within 48 hours by a specialist. So mm -hmm. that is a very successful program and we are achieving the targets. And uh, uh, if you are feeling anything, you should, the best thing is first go to your general practitioner and once they, because we, we in Hamad, we charted a forms of urgent referrals with suspected signs of cancers, which were distributed to all the general practitioners in, Ham, in uh, the Qatar. And they know that if they, there is any sign out of those, they have to refer the patient to the specialist in mm -hmm. Hamad to us within 48 hours. The patient should be seen in Hamad and they are seen in Hamad. Okay, I have a question here. What if you don't want to go uh, to these practitioners and directly somebody wants to approach one of the doctors in Hamad? Yes, we what do. What is the procedure for that? We do get walk-ins, but we're trying to cut that down, the mm -hmm. walk-in, because our clinics are already overloaded with the patients who've been waiting for time for so many yeah. days or months or weeks. That is true. Yeah. And then we, if we start catering the walk-in patients that will be unjust with those ones who are already scheduled. Mm -hmm. So that's where we are trying to smooth it out that people should have the culture of uh, refer going to their uh, primary health centers and, and from there yeah. get referred. Mm -hmm. So it is all streamlined. Right? Okay. So that there's no injustice with anyone. Mm -hmm. And coming back to your question that there were differing views. Yes, if you don't go to the right person, you will have differing views from different doctors. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Hamad, when we have any patient in whom we are suspecting that there is some cancer or something wrong, then they, we call it triple assessment. They have examination by us. They have the um, imaging done, that may be ultrasound, that may be mammogram, that may be MRI, depending on the age of the patient, depending on the, uh, on the presentation of the patient. And then if needed, we do a biopsy. That is mm -hmm. uh, putting a needle in and taking a piece of tissue out for diagnosis. So this whole thing is called triple assessment. Is it and painful? Uh, we give local anesthesia oh, okay. for biopsy okay. and there is a common myth which I want to clear from your platform that they say if you put a needle in the cancer, cancer spreads. There's nothing like that. It does not spread. Getting the information is far more important than sitting and doing nothing and because of the risk that it may spread. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, that is just a myth which should be clarified. Every lady coming to my clinic, if I suggest a biopsy, the first question She's they scared. say, yeah, mm -hmm. no doctor, I don't want a biopsy, you take it out. I said, no, we have to diagnose it. We have to have a roadmap. Yes. We have to have a plan for your treatment. Mm -hmm. So we just can't be doing uh, surgery and taking it out and ending up again in mm -hmm. more surgeries. 
So okay. yeah, so that that is the way forward, and that is how it should be. And uh, one more thing, doctor, I'm sure you would agree with me that ladies, basically, even educated ladies, mm -hmm. even me, sometimes, you know, when I uh, think of going for a mammogram or doing that, we are we are scared. Mm -hmm. We are fearing the fact that what if something comes out. Absolutely right. And uh, this is the feeling which make you lazy, not actually lazy, but this is something, you know, scary, scary feeling, feeling yeah. within you that you are not, uh, you know, forcing yourself to do it. Yeah. And we are just avoiding the situation. That's true. So uh, what, uh, what do you have to say for these ladies? And I know many, many ladies are facing the same situation. I understand. Absolutely. I'll, I can only say this, if, uh, if a cat comes to a pigeon and pigeon closes the eyes, that, mm. doesn't, uh, that doesn't make the cat go away. So you have to be brave enough to face it. You mm. have to, you, and as I repeatedly say again and again, you have to know your body. Mm. So please do breast self-examination mm. again and again, once a month, once in two months, once in three months. And if you find any persistent change, go to the specialist. Okay. Yeah. Okay, another thing, doctor, like not every lady is strong enough to battle this fight. Uh, I've seen some ladies who are not internally that much strong and everybody have different issues with their bodies. So what, uh, what do you suggest for such people? Like when, do you tell the patient right away that would you be uh, able to figure out, find this, uh, fight this out or no? Uh, you How mean, do you deal such uh, ladies? I mean, you mean those ones who who are diagnosed with cancer and, and they, yes, they don't. Uh, okay, we have a very specialized team. We have surgeons. We have our uh, clinical nurse specialist who are uh, specialized nurses who mm -hmm. deal those ladies, who counsel those ladies who have breast cancer about the various uh, treatment options. And uh, once we see, we break the bad news, we tell them the treatment plans, then they have a detailed discussion with the, with the nurses because, uh, because of the shortage of the time. Uh, we can't be sitting with them for a long time. So we ask our CNS, we call them. They sit with them, they go through the details of the treatments with them. If they have any questions, I always say to my patients, next time when you come and see me, bring a piece of paper with lots of questions. So all mm -hmm. the questions you have in your mind, put them on your piece of paper, bring them so I should answer your questions right away instead mm -hmm. of you keeping uh, keep suffering about from that. And those ladies, which despite of all these discussions, we don't just see them once, we see them repeatedly. And we make sure before they are gone for the treatment or they've started the treatment, all the doubts or their mind is clear about what they are going to. And if they, they are still not ready for it or they are scared of it, then of course we have breast cancer survivors who can help them out. Or, and we have our psychologist who can help them out. Mm -hmm. So they, we have support for them, and mm -hmm. we have there is a complete uh, we, consultancy course, and psychological yes, treatment absolutely as well. psychological aspect mm -hmm. because it is it is a psychological trauma. Of course, if it you is. see, it's a major psychological trauma for someone mm -hmm. being diagnosed breast cancer out of blue, and they say we were all right. What happened? Especially those with the screening mammograms, when they come to us, that oh we were okay. We just went for a screening mammogram, and they they found something, and uh, it's cancer. So mm -hmm. they are kind of that we don't feel anything. Mm -hmm. why, why it is? Uh, why? Why is it cancer? So uh, mammogram can detect breast cancer two years ahead of any clinical presentation of a lump. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So that's why we say the as we say the breast cancer in, uh, incidence increases with increasing age. That's why we say 40 and above should go for the screening mammogram. Mm -hmm. So if they have anything, it would be diagnosed earlier than it becomes clinically presentable. And uh, the other thing is, having said that, that yes, they do diagnose uh, cancers two years before they become clinically uh, uh, palpable. Not 100% cancers are diagnosed on mammograms. So mammograms also have their not limit, uh, limitations. Mm -hmm. 10 to 15% of the cases can be missed. Okay. Yeah. So, so you cannot only rely on mammogram. No, I had one one patient. She had uh, a lump in her breast. She came to me. She had all sorts of imaging from before MRI, mammogram, everything, and nothing showed anything. And when I examined her, she had a mass sitting there. I biopsied her. She was cancer. 
I, I um, uh, operated on her. She had a 12 centimeter cancer sitting in her breast. Oh my God. So, ma so that is the thing. She so, survived. Yes, Alhamdulillah, she survived. So uh, that is the thing, that it's not just one thing. That's why we call it triple assessment. It is our specialist examination mm -hmm. and imaging, whatever imaging modality, right for that pers uh, patient's age, and if needed, biopsy. Biopsy, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so three stages you need to go through. Three so things. So is it like three. every year you do all these three or no? Uh, what do you no 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 not every year I'm saying when the patient is coming first time first to you time. Okay. then for diagnosis mm -hmm. it's not it's not that every year once you have diagnosed breast cancer then that is gone for the treatments then okay. it's not that uh, you do let's talk again. about the mammogram thing yeah you said after 40 we should have a mammogram then is it once in a year and then we go uh, do it again in next year or right. what should be the time period in between the right right checkups um, every country has their own age for the screening mammograms. Mm -hmm. As when I was practicing in London, uh, our um, screening uh, age group was 50 to 70. Mm -hmm. And then now it is decreased from 47 to 73. So uh, in Qatar and Doha, we have 45 onwards, 45 to 70, I believe. Uh, so uh, this is every and the duration mm -hmm. between the two mammograms is again dependent on different uh, screening programs and uh, here we have three years every three years you should have a mammogram and depending on the risks if if one somebody because of the family uh, history of uh, breast cancers in the family or because of the genetic mutations, they fall into high risk category. Their screening is a different ball game. Mm -hmm. They are screened differently. They will have more frequent um, imaging okay. as compared to the general population. So basically screening. this is what doctors decide for. This patient. is what doctors uh, decide, yes. Keeping absolutely. in mind your history and everything uh, around you. Yes, okay. and um, uh, I would uh, say, tell one thing more that we have a genetic counseling clinic in Hamad mm -hmm. and those ladies who have uh, breast cancers or ovarian cancers in their first or second degree relatives we send them to our genetic counselor to assess their risk category and uh, risk status and then if needed they will be offered a blood test to know any mutations or changes in their genes and to assess their risk okay okay, okay. coming towards another issue that i've been uh, getting receiving these questions from ladies sure. uh, one lady was interested in knowing that uh, what about wearing a bra 24 7 so what are the suggestions for that Bra has absolutely no problem. You wear it 24-7, you don't wear it, nothing to do with the causation of breast cancer. Wired bra, non-wired bra, nothing no to do with it. Okay. Yeah. It is just that I would say that wear the right size bra. Mm -hmm. Because we, uh, ladies come to us and they have the imprints of the bra on the breast, which shouldn't be. And then oh they say God. we have pain. <laughs> because the bra is not Too properly tight, yeah. fitted. Yeah. So that's why they have pain. Mm. So just wear the right bra and whatever time you want to wear it, it's your choice. Okay. Uh, doctor, coming towards uh, this uh, very important topic there, which is breast implantation. Uh, does it cause cancer? Breast implants are not the uh, reason for cancer, breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Okay. So ladies have breast augmentation, they use breast implants, but they do not cause breast cancer. Nothing to do with it. Nothing that. to do with it. It is just that we say that the diagnosis of breast cancer can be delayed in these ladies because of various reasons. So again, we say that self-examination and examination by a specialist is important. Okay. Uh, now, once you have survived and battled the fight, uh, how free you can be afterwards or what are the risk factors for that patient right. who has survived it? Right. Now, one, the ladies who have suffered breast cancer once, they are always at an increased risk of getting breast cancer again, again okay. as compared to the general population. Mm -hmm. And the risk of recurrence, of course, depending on the biology of that particular cancer, which the, what that lady is suffering from. But in general, it is 
one in uh, 10 will have a recurrence of breast cancer. So if mm. you occur in one year, so if you say in 10 years, if you have treated 100 patients, 90% will be fine, but 10% will come back with a can another cancer there. My other question for you is what are the best treatments okay. that you can take? Yeah, when we talk of the treatments for breast cancer, uh, broadly speaking, it is divided into surgery, and the special type of medicines which are called chemotherapy mm -hmm. and then a special rays they are called radiotherapy okay mm -hmm. now all these three things combine to uh, treat breast cancer not one thing is sufficient okay, okay. quite a for a lot of times, ladies come, oh, chemotherapy, no, that is, I'm going to lose my hair. No, doctor, please, you do surgery, take the tumor out. I don't want chemotherapy, please don't. But this is not the answer. The life is important. Your survival is important. Just because of the aesthetic reasons, you cannot say that we don't want this part of the treatment. We can only do this part, right? Because if you lose your hair, the hair come back. Come back yeah. It is not that it's a permanent hair loss. It is thinning of hair, but the hair come back, and ladies are happy when they when they have hair come back. And when we are uh, planning for chemotherapy for them, we do advise them that do look for some wigs for yourself. So during that period, you don't feel embarrassed going out in public or so, and uh, and that that really ladies do well with that. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, when I say chemotherapy, it is broadly, it could be said systemic therapy because one is chemotherapy, the other part is hormone therapy. Depending on the type of cancer, we give these treatments and then the hormone therapy is the one which is prolonged, which could be given for five years or seven years or 10 years, depending on the type of cancer, on various factors of that patient. Okay. Now, what about uh, the side effects of tamoxifen? Yes, there are various side effects of tamoxifen. This will be a very specialized uh, question. Uh, I would say that it's better, um, uh, if, I, if I say too many side effects here, ladies will be unnecessarily scared. Yeah. So those only who need uh, tamoxifen, tamoxifen do more, all these things, we weigh the risks and benefits. So if the benefits are more, only then we suggest that Medication. particular treatment mm -hmm. to the patients. Yes, tamoxifen does have side effects of having, uh, of causing uterine cancers or causing these clots in the legs. But then again, these risks are less than the benefits it gives you of preventing the cancer coming back. But again, it is only given in those ladies who, who have hormone positive tumors. And if, if uh, general, generally speaking, if the ladies think by taking tamoxifen, even a normal woman, the cancer will not happen, it is not like that. So the normal ladies don't have to take tamoxifen. It is a specialized treatment just for the cancer patients. And only take under the? Uh, under the medical supervision. supervision. Yeah. Okay. Okay, now talking about Hamath Hospital, are there 3D mammography facilities available now? Uh, it is called digital mammography. Yes, mm -hmm. it is very much available there. Okay. And uh, we have very specialized machines and, uh, and uh, good uh, team. So let's talk about the stages and uh, the risk factors for every stage. Right, okay. Now, um, when we say um, stages of breast cancer, where they, we have four stages. Stage one is the uh, stage one and two are the early breast cancer, in which the breast it, the tumor is confined to the breast, or it may have just gone to a few glands or lymph nodes in the armpit. Mm -hmm. Stage three is the local regional advanced stage. That means there is a bigger size of cancer sitting in the breast. There are more lymph nodes involved in the armpit, and stage four is the uh, stage when the cancer has gone beyond the constraints of the breast and the lymph node and spread in the body. Which is the so most, which is uh, which is in the f the first three stages? Yes, we say that the, it is treat a treatable disease, and but the last stage when we say it is a palliative treatment, it is not a curative treatment in that mm -hmm. case. So earlier detection is the answer. And uh, if we detect it early, previously, if you, if you talk of breast surgery, 
previously uh, say early um, in late 80s or so or early 90s century uh, ladies used to have the breast removed the skin over it removed all the glands removed but as it all evolved and the adjuvant treatments became more uh, more into uh, then we have started conserving the breast and now we don't need to remove the breast in all cases. It is just if the tumor is in one area, we just take that area out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a trained oncoplastic surgeon, so we kind of shape the breast in a way that when the ladies, they look themselves in the mirror after, after surgeries, their breast should be acceptably shaped. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that we can create the same breast as God has created. We cannot do that. But we give them an acceptable shape mm -hmm. so when they see themselves in the mirror every time it doesn't remind them of their disease. Yeah. Because that is a psychological trauma they will have every time yes. that they see themselves and that reminds them of their disease. Exactly. Wow, that's really good. Okay, now uh, talk. I want to talk about the role of alternative medicines. Like once you are uh, under the chemo and you're going through some medication for breast cancer, are you eligible to take other medication as well at the same time or no? Uh, well, uh, I would say the um, we we don't have uh, yet as yet. The other medicines are really um, shown a success, I would say. They haven't shown a success as yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, conventional medicines, what I've already described, surgery, systemic therapy, radiotherapy, these, these are the treatments which have shown the success. These are still the gold standard of treatment. Mm -hmm. And lots of ladies, they come, not lots I would say, but some of the ladies, they come and they, they are diagnosed. We, I break the bad news and then they say, doctor, we want to try something else. Okay, fine, go ahead. It's your choice, your body. We can only advise you what is right for you. But if you want to try something else, yes, go ahead, please. And every time it happens, they come back with the advanced stage then. Mm -hmm. because they have tried herbal medicines. They, I, I don't want to be rude to other, um, uh, other um, uh, medicine fields, but uh, unfortunately, whatever things they try, nothing works. And they come back with the same sort of uh, problem with at an advanced stage, when at the earlier stage, they could have been cured, but they come in a late stage. Now it's just a palliative treatment we give them. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, so far, I would say there's nothing uh, uh, comparable to the standard um, gold standard uh, treatments what we are offering okay uh, dr kulsum i think we have talked enough and we covered most of the issues within the field of breast cancer and i'm really grateful to you that you came out and you took out your precious time for us to Thanks. host us for this interview and uh, really glad so Thank before you. we'll take a leave just uh, tell some good advice for our viewers well, my message would be that, uh, yes, we can't control our genes, but we can change our lifestyle. So eat healthy, live healthy. So viewers, it's time for us to leave. Take a lot of care of yourself. Early detection is the best prevention that one can have. Take care. Bye.